welcome to our episode of Chad's Beer Reviews. Uh, continuing with the Bell's beers that were sent to me from Greg and Meredith, we're doing the Two Hearted Ale, which is an India Pale Ale. It's also a pretty famous IPA. It's won a lot of awards. Uh, Rate Beer puts it at, at like their number one or two IPA, or at least the American IPA. I think like they put it the number 63 beer in the world. I know Beer Advocate rates it like the number 98 beer in the world. I was surprised though it didn't really make their top 10 uh, IPA or double IPA list. But I've heard from a lot of people that said that they think this is like the best IPA that they've had. Um, I'd be interested to can see how it compares to Pliny. Um, let me see. It says. An India Pale Ale style well suited for Hemingway-esque trips to the Upper Peninsula. American malts and enormous hop additions give this beer a crisp finish and an incredible floral hop aroma. 7% uh, ABV. Um, the only thing I don't like about Bell's, or at least it's just like their website, they never say which hops and malts they use. And Because I really like Southern Tier and Rogue and, certain, and Dogfish Head, like they'll tell you what hops, malts, and even what yeast they use, what kind of glass to use, what temperature to serve it at. I love breweries that do that. You know, it's I think it's any brewery can put that on their web page and you know it doesn't really take all that much effort to to put that on there. So um, and uh, uh, it's kind of a complaint of mine is when brewers put fish on the label or in the name. I think it's uh, Shipyard does a trout stout or something like that. A message to all the brewers out there, don't do anything with fish with beer. A Budweiser actually makes a, a Budweiser and Clamato chilada thing. It's 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 Budweiser with tomato and clam juice. And it's like, why would you want I don't want fish anywhere near my beer, so that's my little rant for the day. Oh <laughs> that went fine. Oh I can smell it already. It smells pretty good. That's always a good sign. And I'm using my tulip glass again. I really like this tulip glass. I'm gonna, you know, unless I'm doing a lager or some kind of like, you know, a half a wire or something like that, I'm gonna try to use this glass from now on. Well, that's a beautiful shade. That reminds me of the Pliny. It's that bright, you know, orange amber color. Not a lot of carbonation there, and I got a pretty big fat head on there. It's you know, it's what, two, three fingers, yeah. Um, you know, eggshell, foamy, frothy, whatever you want to call it. Smells great. It's, uh, kind of that citrus. Yeah, it's like, it smells like the West Coast style IPA. Lots of citrus. I don't really get much pine in here. I mean, I guess you could call that floral, flowery, floral. I don't know. Not quite as intense as the Pliny, but it's, if you took the Pliny and dial it down a little, that's kind of what you get here. So, I'm just going to dive right in. Mmm. That's a good IPA. That's what I like. Um, right away, the citrus up front, and a little bit of a thicky, thicky, thick piney resin on the back end. And then it finishes again with the, the grapefruit. Uh, citrus leaving a nice very sweet aftertaste almost kind of like candy it's a little it's a little thinner in the mouth than I'd probably prefer it's not I would call this medium bodied I wouldn't quite call it full bodied uh, seven percent ABV that's uh that's right in the ABV range that I that I like in an, in an IPA six seven percent uh, I believe Pliny was eight percent. So, and that, and that range is always pretty good for me. Oh, it looks like there is some yeast in the bottle, because all of a sudden this is hazy. I don't really like that when uh, there's yeast in the bottle and the brewer doesn't tell you. So let's see if it affects the taste at all. Well, the taste seems pretty much the same to me. It's maybe a little bit drier. It's not quite, and now it's not quite as crisp as it was uh, before I had that yeast in there. So that just goes to show how uh, a beer's palate can, can really be affected by how much yeast is or is not in the bottle. Um, I'm just going to take a little break here and we'll come back with my final thoughts. 
Hey, welcome back. Oh, you never really left. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this, uh, the Bell's Too Hard at Ale. I like it a lot. Definitely one of the better American IPAs I've had. And, um, but it's not quite up there with the best of the best. Um, the flavor, as really, you know, delectable as it is, you know, it's really tasty. It's not, it seems like just a tad too mild to me. So, I mean, other, I'm not really complaining other than just that the intensity could be boosted up a little bit. Um, as far as drinkability, I mean, goes down so easy. Finish is fairly clean. I mean, the hops do linger for a little bit. I also noticed that as I got towards the bottom here, it turned from the citrus to more of a pine. And it seems to be actually getting a little bit thicker. It could be from the yeast kind of settling at the bottom of the glass. Um, and I have to say that actually I enjoyed those first few sips without the yeast better than when I, you know, poured the, 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 the entire bottle out. So I think this probably would have been a 10 if it was, you know, if it didn't have the yeast in there. But, other, but otherwise I'm going to give it a 9. And uh, that's all three Bell's beers that I've reviewed so far have all been 9s for me. Like, I just can't quite get my highest recommendation, but, like, I'm really not complaining about them at all. Um, I wish this was sold around here, um, but I think the closest I can get is, like, Pennsylvania. So, I like it a lot. You know, real tasty, highly drinkable, 7% ABV. I just drank this really quick, and it's not, like, going in my head or anything. So, it feels like a pretty light beer for, well, light for what it is, considering, uh... Uh, I, I don't know if sure on the price and all that stuff, so... Um, Bell's Too Hard at Ale. I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. I think it's an excellent beer. One of the better American IPAs I've had. Highly recommend it. So, thanks to Greg and Meredith for sending this, and go check it out. Thanks to you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next review. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better.